And I'm Jerry. And we, we are, are the, the Military, Military Collectible Shop. Shop. So today, we're getting, it's uh, day before, we're going down to the show shows. Show show Eve, if you will. Um, so we're doing our final pack and prep. Um, but I just want to take a minute, um, between uh, working so hard, and uh, just talk about our hopes and dreams uh, for the show of shows. Um, yeah. You know, obviously, it, it's a it's a great show. Uh, we we love doing it. Um, I mean, we go there to sell, but we're we're collectors too. I mean, we're probably more collectors than anything else. So we love looking for stuff. So, Mark, what kind of stuff are you looking for? Well, I'm I'm looking for an SA Cappy with an orange band around it. Uh, oh. It would it would match the SA shirt. The brown I have. shirt, right? And um, for Group Mita. And I'm also looking which means middle middle yeah oh I'm also looking for what color are your buttons silver okay good to know this button color is very important on the SA Kepis. the SA groups used uh, colors to designate groups but then they ran out of crayons so they had to designate a button color uh, to so certain groups will share a color um, like black is used by group uh, Berlin Brandenburg and um, Niederrhein? I don't know. Uh, one group uses a silver button, one group uses a gold colored button. So. Okay. And I have a theory, and this is unsubstantiated uh, completely, um, but I have a theory that the, the difference in the SA buckles, the all brass buckle or the buckles with the silver rondelles, were to match up with the button color. Oh. That's, Maybe. That's a cool thought. Okay. All right. What else are you looking for? Um, I was kind of hoping for a Gebirgsjäger officer tunic. I, I have a visor hat and a M43 hat. Yeah, it's the M43 hat because it's got the longer bill, but um, it's cool. Um, you know, there's a, so, some shoulder boards that I'm looking for, just nothing nothing major, but uh, you know, so so that's my focus for the show for buying things. And um, also, you know, I do look around to see if there's something that I find interesting that I think I can bring to the show, the shop and resell. Um, we're we're kind of out of uniform today because uh, these are our working 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 clothes. We're uh, we're closed, <laughs> so we're we're packing. So what are you looking for, Jerry? Uh, well, I suppose some of the usual. Um, stuff that I look for. I, I like uh, cut off SS insignia. Um, so if you guys have anything that's on a tunic, just snip it right off because that's what I like. Um, and uh, it, it's funny because when I first started collecting SS cut off stuff, it was kind of the, the red headed stepchild of the insignia family. Everybody wanted mint, mint, mint. Um, you know, but I never really liked the, the Depot Queen stuff. You know, the, the SS cuff titles that are so mint that the only person they actually saw was a Polish laborer. Um, you know, never actually was issued to anybody. Um, so I like the pieces that have a little bit of history to them. You know, the you know, kind of smell of battle. Um, I'm also looking for the uh, Wisconsin uh, Vocational School made knives from World War II. Uh, most of them were made in Fond du Lac. Uh, but some were made in Fort Atkinson and uh, Janesville, Wisconsin, too. Um, so, always looking for that. Uh, any interested painted U.S. World War II helmets I like. Um, yeah, and then, I like Mark, you know, anything that kind of trips my trigger, that either it's something that I've never seen before, that I suddenly need. Um, I had no idea it existed until that moment, and then I needed it. Um, or it's something that we can use in the shop. We're, we're actually looking for stuff for a couple people. We have a few shopping lists uh, for some of our friends. Um, so we're going to be keeping an eye out just for certain things. Um, some things, it's you're trying to match up a left with a right. Um, some things are just kind of rare. Some things are just little uniform accessories that don't turn up on web pages, so they're kind of hard to find. But at the show, a lot of people bring that little small stuff. Uh, you just have to ask and network. That's a big thing about the show is networking with uh, with the other dealers to see what they have. Let them know what you're looking for, um, and uh, you know, kind of make connections that way. So that, that's 
that's what's really great about the show is the social connections. Uh, just to add a little bit um, to what Jerry was talking about, the used insignia. Uh, you know, I I collected some uniforms, and um, you know, I have like an unused Luftwaffe flak uniform, but then I got a really beat up Luftwaffe tropical uniform, and it was like, oh, it's so cool because, you know, it was like that was there, you know, and um, you know. I, I kind of really like the beat up, you know, used uniforms. I, I have a, a Hermann Goering um, uniform that was, you could see that they had it been ripped and it had been sewn and sewn well back together. But it, it's like, it, it, it just has more history than, oh, a brand new one. And it's still got the paper tag on it. It was like, well, where, what sort of action did that see? But, um, yeah. Probably still have some loops on it, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. Right. It doesn't even have the galls on it. So, um, yeah, no, that that's cool. Um, yeah, any any of that used stuff is always, you know, it, it kind of. And the Germans were real big on repairing stuff. It, it, it's funny because we'll see a lot of flags that have been repaired. We'll see a lot of tunics that have been repaired. I've seen tunics where the the pockets and even a sleeve did not match the color of their uniform at all. And it, the Germans just fixed it, sent it back out there. You know? We've had flags that um, there was like pieces of the flag that were of a, a different type of material that was sewn into the flag, and you could you'd see it was sewn in that period of time. And uh, just uh, that use thing is, is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plus, it's always it's good to just get a gauge on on what what's selling, what the markets are doing. Um, you know, talking to other dealers and other collectors, what kind of things are they looking for? Um, so it, it's always a great show. If you ever get a chance to go down there, we, we highly recommend it. Um, you know, it is it is a bit of a time commitment and it's a bit of a travel uh, for us. So and hopefully the weather will hold um, until we get there. Um, yeah, we have an, an, a pending storm coming in. Yeah. It's going to be... We're going to be hit with first snow, then freezing rain, and then eventually if we go further south, it'll just be rain. We just need to get ahead of it. That's yeah. Our Leave yeah. early. It's, yeah. Get out get out in front of it. So I think, I think we'll be fine. So fingers crossed. Um, but hopefully we'll see you there. Uh, be sure to stop by and say hi. We love, we love talking to everybody. Um, we can't always spend a lot of time at the show um, talking with you or looking at your entire collection of German tinnies. Um, but we do love looking at things. Uh, we do have to, to, you know, be cognizant of the show going on around us. Um, but, but be sure to stop by and say hi, because it's great to put a, a face with a screen name, um, you know, especially uh, some of the people from the forums. Um, you know, it's always, it's always nice to meet you in person. Um, and uh, feel free to drop us any questions, or, you know, we'll, we'll be doing some reports from the show. Um, and we'll do, be doing some reports uh, back at the hotel room, kind of the after-action report, if you will. Great. So, All okay. Right. Uh, well, we better get back to work. Uh, we still have a lot of bins to pack. We have a lot of stuff. Um, so. Oh my God, do we? Yeah. So, uh, hopefully, you'll find us under. The behind our tables behind all this it's mountains of stuff uh so okay uh bring a lot of cash if you're going to the show um bring as much as you can shake those couch cushions um it'll it'll be worth it and uh hopefully we'll see you soon at the show of shows until next time i'm jerry and i'm mark and we, we are, are the, the military, military collectible shop. shop all right and we're back uh so while we were packing uh, the postman came, um, so let's see what the postman brought us. Always good to get stuff right before the show, so we can bring it along. Don't cut yourself. Don't, yeah. cut, don't cut me. Okay. Ooh, bubble wrap. I, I don't think there's helmets in here. How did they roll up those helmets like that? At, at work, I've actually banned my staff from popping bubble wrap because I use it. So they get yelled at if they pop bubble wrap. 
Yes, I rule with an iron fist. It's a Japanese bayonet and a strange type of plastic. There you go. Okay, well, that's a Japanese bayonet. <coughs> Apparently, I'm allergic to them. Oh, looks nice. Oop. Stop that. That's, uh, I don't remember the marking. Somebody with something. Yeah. Muck done with Kokora. Uh, here's another one. It's, uh, it's equally taped up. Rip the tape, not the wrap. Rip the tape, not the wrap. Oh, it's got a frog. Look at that. And this one's made by. I think that's uh, that's a one of the more common ones. Nagoya. Yeah. We should see if the whole blade is here. Yeah. Look at that. Nice early one with the uh, early hooked quillion. Uh, this one too. Later on, that they they realized that the the quillions weren't as effective as they had hoped. So. All right. Well, That's those cool. are going. I'll put those in a bin right over here. Ooh, that's a pretty short cross strap. <laughs> Here's a little guy. That's uh nice. Um, yeah. Well, I think it's it's, a, I think it's for sale. I don't think it's a cross strap. Uh <laughs> nice Wehrmacht uh, belt and buckle, uh, pebbled aluminum, aluminum with the leather tab. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, obviously that little thing is kind of strange. Not sure what's going on there. Hmm. Wow. Okay. <gasps> it's a dagger. You, you better seal it in my pocket. It's an RLB, uh, second pattern uh, enlisted man. Um, little, little knackered, but it's an RLB. Uh, kind of a neat, neat dagger design. Nice deco, looking eagle. Always kind of like that design. All right, well that'll go with us. Oh, with the hanger. Nice. Yeah, cool. cool. Alright, let's see what else is in here. It seems to be... Wait, it's, a, it's actually untaping, sort of. Oh! Ow! 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 You're breaking my heart. Mark's trying to do the math to see if it's matching. Um, almost. <laughs> almost a winner. <laughs> Just like all my lottery. Close. <laughs> Just like all my lottery tickets. <laughs> I was only six numbers away from winning that two billion dollars. Hey, but you can't win if you don't play. Uh, oh, but it's a both made by the same 44 CQH. They're both made by the same place. Um, just, uh, yeah, actually just a few numbers off. Maybe the guy was dyslexic. That Those was. Germans. Uh, but a nice K98 uh, Mauser bayonet. Uh, so that's cool. Anything else? No. All right. Well, some good stuff and some free bubble wrap, which we always like. Uh, okay, we're going to continue on with the packing, um, and so now we got even more stuff to pack.
just when you thought it couldn't get any more full. Uh, okay, All right. so we'll see you at the show. Until next time, I'm Jerry. And I'm Mark. And we are the, the Military, Military Collectible, Collectible Shop. Shop.